So you'll never guess what happened to the uh, solar roadway. Ah, yes, solar roadways, that fantastic Indiegogo campaign that raised over $2 million over two years ago. Solar freaking roadways. It's technology that replaces all roadways, parking lots, sidewalks, driveways, tarmacs, bike paths, and outdoor recreation surfaces with solar panels. And not just lifeless, boring solar panels, smart microprocessing, interlocking, hexagonal solar units. And got almost as much again in government funding, because that's the kick they really needed to completely revolutionize mankind and make America the power broker of the entire planet. Want to save this planet and make it sustainable for your kids and all future generations of life who can look back and say, hey, at least they invented solar freaking roadways. So, well, after two years, they installed their very first solar roadway because that would really show those naysayers. And the first ever solar panel roadway was set to unveil today in Sandpoint. KXLY4's Ariana Cohen was in Sandpoint to get a sneak peek this afternoon. Can you imagine driving or walking on glass? Well, that's all about to become a reality in Sandpoint. Tomorrow, the inventors Julie and Scott Brusaw plan to unveil the solar panel roadway. Hey, and we're just excited to show it to the world, and we're really happy to have the support here in our hometown of Sandpoint, and really happy that the first one in the world is going in right here. Now, sure, the Killjoys will point out that it wasn't actually a roadway, and that no vehicle of any sort ever drove on it. And that according to their online power statistics, they never generated any power. And this really has to be seen to be believed. The first solar roadway ever actually produces zero energy. Zero, nada, zip, it produces nothing. It's because it's a solar powered roadway that doesn't generate any power and it pays for itself they're solar freaking roadways and the leds that they assured everyone would light up the roads to give you signs and the such like and would be visible even in full daylight uh, they weren't really so visible and you sure they couldn't really make up signs or anything will be laid down here so the public can watch how they light up to create lines for roads parking lots and more you know they were more kind of limited to the uh, disco or christmas tree settings because that's what everyone expects after $2 million, two years of research, and another million and a half dollars or so in government funding to get some sort of patio-sized area, and they couldn't even pave the slabs in a professional-level fashion. And all of this after they claimed in their Kickstarter that they invented this technology over a decade ago, in 2000. And six. Um, I have concerns about the future. Is this thing even possible? I told you, yes. Solar roadway technology was invented by engineering couple Julie and Scott Brusa in 2006. And then the last lap, of course, <laughs> half of the panels never actually worked. And of the half that did, half of those died within about one week, leading to the whole site being shut down for about three months while I fixed the solar <coughs> roadway. Well, now it's back. It's reopened in the last week of February of 2017 with brighter LEDs that you still can't really see in the sunlight. And sure, they don't really make road signs or anything, but look, they can actually melt snow. That's until you think about it just a little. So when I got my high-speed camera, I needed to get some very powerful LED lights because for high-speed photography, you need lots of light. So I bought some of these LED spotlights. Okay, so this guy here is about 20 watts. Even at 20 watts, you'll notice it's got a big heat sink on the back of it. I think that's good. You gotta see this guy. This guy is about 70 watts. And as you can see, it's almost entirely heat sink. So let's actually see what those look like. And they crank some juice through them. Okay, so that's sucking up 12 volts and about one and a half amps, which means it's about 20 watts, give or take. So that's what 20 watts looks like. It's just quite bright, but then again, you've got to bear in mind, if that was spread out over an entire solar roadway panel. And with LED lights under your feet, it's going to look like freaking Tron out there. But real, because this is the real world. Whoa. I would love to get a thermal camera 
on that solar roadway just to see how much waste heat it's pumping into the atmosphere. But I'm going to get a thermal camera on that and see what that looks like. Okay, there you go. So now, boom. So, yeah, at that, it's really hot. Look at that. It's burning up on the back. And it really is as well. I mean, it's really hot to the touch. But, so that's only about 20 watts. Yeah, you see it here, it's about 20 watts. And I would be stunned if that's how little power consumption there is on these these solar panels, um, sorry, these solar roadway panels, um, my reckoning is they're probably twice this. I mean, here I've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that right? Yeah, nine. I've got nine super bright LEDs. They're running at about two watts a piece. You do a little count up on the uh, LEDs they have on their solar roadways, and you're getting up much nearer sort of 50 watts for their power consumption, which means that, yeah, it's not surprising that they managed to melt some snow with these things. That means that this one piece of roadway alone consumes about one and a half kilowatts of power. Uh, yeah, it's maybe not so surprising it would melt the snow. And for that number of about one and a half kilowatts, there's another guy who's done some very good breakdowns of solar roadways called Dave from EEV Blogs. Things, but surely here's some people trying to stomp on a stuck lead that's been stuck on for hours. Surely that's not going to do anything. These things are super duper rugged after all. Hey, listen to Scott. If these are on your driveway. They're bolted together. They weigh 70 pounds each. They're not going anywhere. A tornado hurricane can pass right over the top of them. This is tempered glass, so it's really, really strong. It's half inch thick. It's textured on top. We had traction tested so it can stop a vehicle going 80 miles an hour on a wet surface. Scott's not kidding. I did everything I could to put a dent in the solar panel, but only gave myself sore feet. So there's absolutely no way these idiots trying to stomp on it are going to turn this lead off. Not a chance. Look, they're just wasting their time. <laughs> oh. Oh. They did it. Hey, way to go. Percussive maintenance works. Anyway, in Dave's great video, which I'll link below, and he includes this shot of the power supply that they're using, which is about two and a half kilowatts. And they say in the article here, we just had time to quickly throw up some lead patterns and they are on a low setting, which is why it's hard to see them on the webcam in the daytime. The naysayers are really having a field day with that one, but we'll set things straight soon enough. Well, A, why are they on the low setting? Do you have some sort of power issue? It didn't look like it. And B, uh, the LEDs which were stuck on full brightness, they were a hell of a lot brighter than the other ones that were all disco in, Saturday Night Fever job, and you still couldn't see those until like 5 or 6 p.m. at night. It's ridiculous. It's an epic fail. LEDs will not work as road markings. So let's just say it is one and a half kilowatts, just for the sake of argument, and that half of that energy goes into light and half goes into heat. Yeah, these LEDs put out lots of heat, which is why you need those big ass heat sinks on the back of the bright LEDs. So that means you're getting about 750 watts of heating for this piece of roadway which is 750 joules per second. That's enough to melt about two grams of ice per second, or 120 grams of ice per minute, or about seven kilograms of ice per hour. Uh, yeah, it's maybe not surprising that they're ice free, given how much energy these babies are sucking up. I mean, look at that. That's one and a half kilowatts per hour. So it's 36 kilowatt hours per day or 13,000 kilowatt hours per year. That's as much energy as a typical American household consumes in a year. Yeah, that crappy little piece of roadway there with its crappy little LEDs alone is sucking up as much energy as an entire household. How wonderfully environmentally friendly. This is exactly the kind of over the horizon thinking that has brought Idaho's own solar roadways to national and world prominence. But hey, the solar roadway team said on the reopening, now we can all enjoy watching the panels and the visitors once again. 
Walls will be laid down here so the public can watch how they light up to create lines for roads, parking lots, and more. Yeah, because that's what everyone wants out of a roadway. Not to be able to drive on it or anything, but to be able to watch it. But wait, it's generating electricity now, right? Well, not really according to their website. Yeah, the solar roadway has yet to demonstrate that it generates any power whatsoever. But according to their website, it's going to be maintenance free. The panels will be smart and they'll talk to each other by Wi-Fi and let them know when a panel is malfunctioning. Uh, well, apparently not, because firstly, one panel failed, then a whole bunch of them failed, and then it caught fire and the fire service turned up, all within two weeks of the reopening. And now, none of them work. Solid gold hammer. Do you know how many solid gold hammers you could have bought merely for their $2 million Indiegogo project? Somewhere between 50 and 100. Now sure, gold is a really stupid material to make a hammer out of, but compared to the idea of a roadway you can't even drive on. No, let me correct that. A solar roadway that doesn't generate any power and you can't drive on. All of a sudden, gold hammers actually seems like a pretty smart idea. Has anyone seen this video for solar freaking roadways? Yeah! have seen the future and it is solar freaking roadways. <laughs> Panels in our streets with sensors that can know if someone's crossing the street ahead of you with lights so it lights up and says careful there's an animal, there's a kid, there's a pedestrian. Parking lots that can change their lines. Heaters in them so you never have to worry about snow plows anymore. If we vote with our money for projects we believe in, we can create a future where our society is driven by new ideas. It need only begin with private driveways and parking lots. Once the ball gets rolling, it'll create a momentum all of its own. Imagine if the pavement you drive on would never ice over, didn't have potholes, the lines light up on their own, and the pavement would generate electricity. A small company from Idaho named Solar Roadways is making an impression on MoDOT. And they, Federal Highway, as well as Solar Roadways, are ready to deploy. And we are the DOT that are working with Federal Highway and Solar Roadways with some Federal Highway research dollars to begin that first public deployment of their technology by a state DOT. And if you think that's the only government institution that's blowing money on this thing, you're wrong. Solar Roadways, just back from Baltimore, met with ABLE Foundation and city officials to decide site for Solar Roadways pilot. Inner Harbor is it. You have got to be kidding me. You need to know about this technology. You need to get behind it. You need to share it with everyone you know. Because this is actually happening. Whoa!